I do not know what to talk. My storehouse of consciousness is empty now. <laughs> Today, I have decided to explain the real nature of an arahant because there are many misunderstandings, imaginations, controversies also regarding this word arahant. I think all of you know that there are three vehicles or three ways for us to find out our final salvation. Buddha, Pachyaka Buddha, Arahant. These are the three ways, achievement. Again, the controversy between Theravada and Mahayana. According to Mahayana schools of Buddhism, becoming an Arahant is a selfish idea, they say, for their own salvation. But Theravada Buddhism, see, the original form of Buddhism, introduced these three methods and also explained. Since it is very difficult for a person to become a Samma Sambuddha, Supreme Enlightened the Buddha. There are two more methods. Either to attain Pacheka Buddha, also a person who gain enlightenment but always keep away from the society never associate with the public. So they are known as private Buddha. That word is not suitable, private. <laughs> there is no privacy. And uh, solitude. Keep away from the public. That is their nature. We cannot ask why. They don't like. Now that is their way of life. And such Pachyaka Buddhas never appear during the time of a Sammasa Buddha. Then the last method is Arahant. Becoming a perfect, holy person who has eradicated all the mental impurities. These are the three methods. Since Arahantas are not fully enlightened to enlighten others, then Mahayani says, it is not advisable to become Arahantas. What they say, everybody must try to become a Buddha to save others. But this saying is contradicting to the basic teachings of the Buddha. Please remember, contradicting. Why? First and foremost, we must understand there is no such thing as saving others in Buddhism. Very clearly the Buddha has mentioned this. I cannot save you, but I can tell you what to do. Tumhehi kichang atapang akhataro tathagata. Here, this is the saying. Tathagata, so the Buddhas can tell you what to do and how to find out, how to gain your own salvation. Another person, either God or Buddha, cannot give you salvation. Very clearly, Buddha has mentioned. Don't depend on another person to find out your salvation. You have to work for that. Otherwise, as a lazy man, every day you can go and pray, asking your God, asking your Buddha, asking your Bodhisattvas to gain your salvation. It never come true. It never happened. Because another person cannot do this. Therefore, we never agree with 
that believe or they are saying that either Buddhas or Bodhisattvas can save us. Uh, then, what is the difference between an Arahant and a Buddha? Uh, still, many people cannot understand. The Buddha is known as enlightened or awakened, supreme, enlightened Buddha. But Arahantas are not supreme, enlightened persons. But they are perfect, holy, religious people, harmless people, honest people, kind people, understanding people, all the good qualities and the virtues are there. But their knowledge, their understanding, their wisdom, their enlightenment cannot compare with the Buddha. Because after learning and practicing the teachings of the Buddha, they attain Arahant by following the teachings of other Buddha. Now what we are doing here is we are following and practicing the teaching. But it is up to us to aspire, determine whether we want to become an Arahant or Pacheka Buddha, if not a Samma Sambu. Up to us. If you want to become a Samma Sambuddha like Sakyamuni or Gautama the Buddha, then you have to complete all the qualities simply by praying or worshipping, you never gain it. You know how he had to work, how he had to sacrifice, how he had to tolerate and suffer. Life after life, in order to gain this enlightenment. So if you are also ready to undergo all these sufferings, difficulties, problems, if you also can maintain, uphold all the great qualities and virtues, if you also can develop your knowledge and wisdom and understanding up to that maximum level, or then one day you also can become a Buddha. But you never gain this from another person. Then if you think it is very difficult and what you need is to find out your final salvation. Right? Or then you had to develop this aspiration, determination. By knowing the existing here in this world, in this sansara, that we had to suffer life after life. Enormous problems and worries and troubles and difficulties and calamities and fightings and crying and millions and one thing. No end. Every day we are worrying and fighting and working. Since there is no contentment or satisfaction in our life, whether we are rich or poor, makes no difference. Worries are the same. Problems are the same. Fear and uncertainty in everything are the same. There's no difference. Then, we try to cultivate our way of life. When we try to cultivate our way of life, we had to do some service to others. So without serving others, without helping others, without sacrificing for the benefit of others, we cannot become an Arahant. Therefore that allegation is wrong, that Arahantas are selfish. If they are selfish, they never become Arahant. They had to sacrifice everything, life after life, they too, Practice paramitas, but the duration, the period that they have to practice is limited. But in the case of Sammasam Buddha, had to 
practice such a long period that is for perfect or supreme enlightenment. Ah, this is the difference. Again, ten paramitas, ten perfections, those who want to attain arahanta, practice only one method because every paramita there are three stages. Take dana, dana paramita, dana upaparamita, dana paramatta paramita. Three ways, three stages. Meaning, contributing or donating something for the benefit of others. That is the first stage. Anyone can do that. But the second stage of this dana is donating something from your physical body like blood and eyes and kidneys or anything. Uh, that one is higher than that. Paramartha, highest dana, okay, sacrificing the whole life for the benefit of others to maintain principles, virtues without violating we may die in the process of our struggle to maintain our good principle. We know that we had to face, but we are not scared of that. Uh, that is the highest. Yeah. So one who wants to become a Buddha must practice all these ten paramitas according to those three stages. But person who is going to become an arahant, not necessary to complete all the three stages. Now you can see the difference. First item is enough. Yes? Sacrifice something. Practice charity. Practice dana. Contribute something. Not necessary to go further. If they like, they can do so. But not compulsory. Now see the difference now. Then the time. That how long they had to practice. Until they gain perfection. To eradicate there are mental defilements. Just to eradicate mental defilement, that's all. Then, the perfections or ten paramitas you have heard, you have learned earlier. So, without working for the benefit of others, without sacrificing own pleasure for the happiness or the benefit of others, a person cannot become an arahant. If that person maintains some, some sort of selfishness by disregarding others that he won't to find out his own salvation, that person never become an arahant because that attitude is wrong. Then, what is the definition of this word, arahant? When you mention the nine great virtues of the Buddha, it will be so Bhagava Araham. So we can use this word Araham for the Buddha also. But we don't use only that word. We always say Araham Samma Sambuddhu. Araham Samma Sambuddhu. The definition is Araham Arahoti Namena Araham Papam Nakare. Arahat phalang patto, arahang namate namo. That is the meaning. Arahang, the normal meaning is worthy. Worthy of something. Worthy of respect, worthy of honor, worthy of offering. Because he is holy. Worthy of respect. So one meaning is arahang, worthy one. Another meaning, arahang papang nakaraye. Now that is very important. Only person who never made mistake or commit any evil deeds, even secretly. Remember this. Arahang uh, means no secret. But all the others, good people, religious people, educated people, cultured people, when you study very carefully, 
there are some sort of secret behind it. Others cannot understand it. Hypocrisy, cunningness, selfishness, certain degrees of these bad elements are there in their mind. Therefore, they make mistake secretly. They don't do openly knowing that they are wrong. So they are not perfect. Arahantas have no secret. There is nothing for them to do behind the curtain. Now this is the nature of their life. That is why we introduce them as perfect human beings. So we are not perfect. Maybe 50% or 75% perfect. But still we have secret. We have hypocrisy, we have selfishness. And Arahant, if we want to compare with any living being in this world, we can compare with a small baby. This small baby is very innocent. Cunningness, cruelty, jealousy, evil forces, selfishness, these are not noticeable. Potentials are there, developing in the mind, but not visible. That is why everybody loves a baby, a child. Even a cruel man or some animals also. There are some animals who don't like to destroy or disturb or kill babies. So Arahantas also exactly like those small babies. So innocent, never made any mistake, but they have lot of virtues and good qualities and knowledge and wisdom also, but cannot compare with the Buddha. Then another meaning, arahang araho dinamin arahang papang nakare. They never commit any sins or and even any mistake secretly also. Arahatta Phalampad. They have attained the highest stage of sainthood. You know, there are four stages within it. Sotabanda, Sakadagami, Anagami, Arah. Four. That is the highest. To attain these stages, one after the other, we had to reduce, eradicate, so many heavy things that we are keeping in our mind. So when we attain the higher stage of Arahant, our life becomes very, very light. Now very heavy. Because our burdens and responsibilities and commitments and other things are very heavy. But they are free from all these commitments and bondages and responsibilities and worldly conditions. Higher stage. To attain the first stage, you know, we had to completely eradicate three defilements from the mind. What are those three? Sakkayaditti, Vichikicca, Silabhata Parama. Only three things. Of course, there are many other things, but these are very strong, hidden forces in our mind. Sakkayaditti, this is the most difficult thing for us to get rid of. Self-illusion, the imagination that we maintain, there is a self. It is imagination. So we use this word, my, not myself or yourself, that gives different meaning. It is not a religious term. It is for our conversation. My self, my soul. Your self means soul or spirit. It is an imagination. As long as we maintain this belief that there is a self, then we develop our egoism. Ah, that is the danger. Egoistic ideas. I. I did that. My, I 
and my most of our problems today are based on this i and my claim so when we get rid of this belief of self we don't develop this self then the mind is free after that we never fight we never grumble never accuse others about my or self or i see not so easy thing as you believe you think simply by praying to somebody you can become a saint <laughs> and then the second one vichikicha a skeptical doubt that mean a still we are not sure whether the buddha is really enlightened person or not we do not know we have some doubt and we are not sure about his dharma he says oh people say if we practice this dharma we also can gain enlightenment and attain salvation but we are not sure doubt and we believe that there will be another life after our death but sometimes creates some sort of doubt in our mind whether it is true or not again we believe bad things that we do commit create bad effect but we can see many people are doing very well after committing all sort of evil and then we are how can we then doubt so we had to get rid of this kind of doubts my dear friend when it is clear when your mind is clear uh, then you are ready you are on the way to attain the first stage of sin that means now you have unshakable confidence nobody in this world who can change your mind now people can change your mind third one silabbata paramas also very common among all the existing religions the belief in so many rites and rituals and ceremonies and performances and torture self torture and punishments and penalties thinking that they can find out their salvation through these practices by performing all these things we had to get rid of this belief these practices are our traditional cultural practices there are, there may be some religious significance in certain practices but only through these practices it is impossible for us to find out our salvation unless we cultivate our way of life these are the three so if you can maintain these three qualities in your mind then very easily you can attain the first stage of sainthood sotama now then the second stage this is a gradual development no one can jump at once sakada gami only one life after that sakka means one no more two rebirth for that person because reduce the mental uh, defilements to attain the second stage we had to reduce only two weaknesses since they are very strong in our mind we cannot eradicate them at once and we can suppress subdue control what are those two things kama raga and patika the very strong our craving for worldly pleasure very strong we are crazy to indulge all the senses even by adapting wrong method crooked method so we can reduce this but cannot eradicate at once but still remain craving for worldly sensual pleasure then attain the second stage when you reduce these two third stage 
anagami. Anagami means never come back to this world. What? Because you have cut off so many bondages here. To attain the third stage, anagami, uh, we had to eradicate those two that we have suppressed in the second stage. Uh, the second one is patika. First item is craving for pleasure. Second one is patika, ill will, hatred. Very strong. We want to take revenge, keep grudge throughout our life. We maintain this by nature. I can give a very simple example for you to understand. By nature, from the very beginning in our life, how we take, how we like to take revenge. You know, supposing a baby fell down, accidentally, hurt very badly, then start to cry, crying and crying and crying. Then the mother come and carried this baby and goes to somebody and beat that person. When the mother start to beat another person, baby stop crying and start to laugh. Did you notice this? Ah, uh, see, that baby want to take revenge for that. Because the mother wanted to show that he is responsible for this. Baby stop crying and start to laugh. See how strong this in our mind from our childhood. So hatred, our ill will or grudge is there. That is why it is difficult for us to get rid of this at once. So craving for worldly pleasures, craving for, or not craving, I mean the, the hatred, completely wipe out, eradicate from our mind. Now, five things are no more free. Now third stage, not yet attain our hand. Five more for us to reduce. There are ten altogether. These are known ten fetters. Dasa sang yo jana. Dasa means ten. Ten fetters. Bondages. We are here, we suffer because of these ten. What are those five? Ruparaga, Aruparaga, Mana, Uddhacha, Avidya. Five. But still active in our mind even after attaining the third stage of sainthood, people, due to their lack of understanding, very easily get fed up with some religious people, so monks or priests, when they happen to see that they make some mistake. Although they have not yet attained even the first stage of sainthood, here we can see, people who have attained even the third stage of sainthood, also, still maintain so many human weaknesses in them. I'll explain this part. There was a man during the Buddha's time, Sakya, related to the Buddha. Sarkani Sakya, his name. Very devout, religious man. Everybody knows he is a very devout devotee. At the same time, everybody knows that he drinks every day. He never gave up his drinking. After his death, some of the disciples approached the Buddha and asked, actually what happened to him? We know he was a very devout Buddhist, but we know he used to drink a lot. What is his destiny? <laughs> the Buddha asked, do you know, he has already attained the first stage of sainthood. He was a Sotapan. That means, even a person who has attained Sotapanna, the first stage of sainthood, still can make mistake and break all the five precepts. Why? Craving for pleasure still working in that way. But not like ordinary men. Under certain circumstances, they may break. That means they are not accepted. So, still they have their human weaknesses. We must understand this. How long it will take for us to reduce 
our weaknesses. We know very well our anger, our jealousy, our selfishness are very bad. We know. There is no argument. But have you got courage to withdraw all these things at once? Cannot. That is why it will take long time for us to train. We cannot train our mind by force. Impossible. Only through understanding. That is why the Buddha started his mission with right understanding. Eight noble path. First item, right understanding. True understanding, not by force, not by torturing. Understanding. That is why knowledge is important. Now you are here to gain this knowledge. After gaining this knowledge, you consider. This knowledge gives support you, to develop your understanding. Uh, then you get the courage to give up. I don't want to do this anymore. Then determination. That is one of the paramitas, one of the perfections. You determine through understanding. So what are these five factors? Ruparaga, Aruparaga, Mana, Uddhacha, Avidya. Craving for fine material world. What does it mean? They have no craving toward this world anymore. But they like certain Brahma world, realm, where those Brahmas have very radiant, pleasant, pleasing, soothing, figures, features, but still they have craving for that. Those who meditate and achieve some development also get the chance to be born there. They have to get rid of this. But still it is under worldly condition, under sansara. Arupa Raga, another kind of Brahma realm, where there are Brahmas without any uh, physical body, visible physical body. That means they are free from all those problems that we are facing. We had to face sicknesses, old age and ache and pains and uh, so many problems. And they, but they are free from all these problems since they are not holding any physical body. Then there is some difficulty for you to understand. How can life exist without a physical body? Formations of a physical body take place due to combinations of elements and forces and energies and mental energies. But when we go on developing and developing higher and higher and higher and higher, the decrease of elements in our physical body also going on reducing and reducing and reducing. That is why devas and spirits and angels and brahmas are invisible to our naked eyes. So, the formations of their physical body is not like ours. Element, degree of elements. So, when we reach the higher stage of brahma, that particular stage, no visible physical body, but the life is there. We carry this up to the last stage. Never give up. That is why I always say, we are proud. You say, we are proud to be Chinese. I can say, I am proud to be a Sinhalese. Yes, and that is called pride. I am proud to be a Buddhist. It is unbuddhistic. If you say, I am proud to be a Buddhist, it is unbuddhistic. <laughs> the pride is not a very healthy word. So one day, we had to get rid of this pride. Then, there's a beautiful saying in Zen meditation a school. Learning Buddhism is to learn ourselves. Understand? There's nothing for us to learn from outside. If you say you are learning Buddhism, that means you are trying to learn about you, yourself. So the Buddha said the whole world is eating you. Right? Then, learning yourself, then you have to learn about yourself. Learning yourself is to forget yourself. 
when you forget yourself, you think all are equal. Understand? No discrimination, no Chinese, no Sinhalese, no Indians. When you come to that stage, so learning yourself is to forget yourself. When you forget yourself, there won't be any problem. That is the highest development in meditation. Now here, the pride that we maintain in our mind up to the last stage. So we have to drop this. Then we feel all are equal. No discrimination. Then, buddhacca. This is another peculiar type of mental hindrance. Buddhacca means some sort of restlessness in our mind without any reason. And we do not know why. We cannot give any reason why. Restlessness. We have everything. And we do not know what we really want. But we are not happy. Restlessness. What is it? Can you tell me what it is? You cannot. Sankhara. Mental formation. Mental tendencies. Remaining. Mental attitudes. A still. Going on haunting, disturbing our mind. According to the modern psychology, we can say subconscious mind. In our subconscious mind, a still remain certain uh, defilement, sediment, little bit of sediment of mental defilement. So these things occasionally project to our mind. Then we feel some sort of uneasiness or restlessness. Because this person has not yet eradicated all his mental defilements. Then the last one, avidya. That is the main culprit. Avidya means lack of understanding of four noble truth. You see, person who has developed his mind up to that extent, through Buddhism, practicing, understanding, uh, still there is no clear vision, clear picture of realization of four noble truth. It is very easy for us to say four noble truth. Uh, suffering and cause of suffering, end of suffering, method to get rid of suffering, that's all. Take one item, analyze and see whether we can understand when the mind is free from that ignorance, that avidya, no more mental defilement in that person's mind. Then attain perfection or arahanta. So after attaining the arahanta, no more rebirth. Why? No craving, no anxieties, no mental disturbances. And never crave for another life. Doesn't like. That suffered more than enough. Then the difference in their knowledge, wisdom and understanding. That is very important. All those arahantas divide into four groups. All are not equal. So we should not think all those who have attained arahantahood or perfections it's same knowledge or can remember their previous birth and can read others' minds. No. There are differences. It depends on the method they practiced earlier to gain this sainthood, arahanta. What sort of meditation, whether it is samatha or vipassana, if not mere understanding, Without any meditation, realization. If not, by using their full effort and energy, day and night, working, 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 could manage to get rid of their defilement. And how long they have practiced this mental training and their background. What they have done during their previous birth, life after life, 
in order to gain this perfection or arahanta. When you read many of those stories in Dhammapada, you can see uneducated people, even robbers, gangsters, farmers, laborers, after listening to the Buddha, at once, instantly, either attains sotapanna, sakadagami, anagami or arahanta, at once. We cannot believe this because we do not know the secret. And we do not know how they have prepared earlier, during their previous birth, so their background. Those who can understand what they have done previously, they can understand how they attain this sainthood so easily. Then you can ask, in that case, why they were leading very irreligious life, like robbers or gangsters, because although they have prepared everything, due to certain karmas that they have done during their previous birth, rebirth has taken place. Because of that particular karma, they are leading that way of life. If there is anybody to guide them, change their way of life, then they get the chance to come back, to go back. Uh, that is what the Buddha did. That is why the Buddha is needed here, only for that. Children attain sainthood or arahants because they have prepared everything. Minds are ready, like a lotus bud, just come out the water, they know. Why we cannot attain this? We are observing five precepts, eight precepts, we meditate, we listen to Dhamma, we try to avoid so many bad things, try to be good, but still, why? Just started. Uh, that is the only answer, just started. So our background is not very rich. That is why it is difficult. But we can continue. Now within this lifetime, we have already laid the foundation and very easily you can continue in your next life, then life after life. So this is a gradual development. So the attainment of arahantahood is one of the vehicles to attain nirvana. Then there is another question, whether there is any difference between the Buddha and Arahant when they attain nirvana. Any discrimination, whether the Buddha can enjoy more <laughs> in Nirvana because he is a superb, supreme enlightened person and Arahantas less than the Buddha. What is your opinion? Do you think both can experience the same bliss, same salvation, same happiness or whether there are any differences? What is your opinion? Example, now you want to go to Singapore. Hmm? Those who got money, go by plane, only 45 minutes. Those who got money also can go by uh, Mercedes Benz aircons and not tired and very easily but take time, at least 8 hours. Those who, have, those who are poor, they travel by train or by bus, if not by motorbike, if not by paddling bicycle. But how long will it take to reach Singapore? The time, you can see the difference. But all those people who travel by plane and bus and car and motorbike and, and block cart also can reach Singapore. After reaching there, Singapore never discriminates. Or you cannot enjoy here because you came by block cart. <laughs> same. No difference. Same bliss, same happiness, same salvation. Then what is the difference? The Buddhas can enlighten and educate and pave the way for others to find out their salvation. Arahantas are not perfect for that. They are not strong enough. Their knowledge is not strong enough to enlighten others. They too can that, but not like the Buddha. The main reason is this. I have told you, there are six a special characteristic, Shat Asadharana Jnana, can find only in a Buddha. 
supreme buddha even pachyek buddha arahant so any other religious teachers in this world you cannot find these six qualities among those six qualities all asaya nusay jnan that mean the buddha is the only person who can understand our mentality our understanding capacity our way of thinking how far we have prepared to understand this or to gain this salvation how far we have prepared earlier only buddha can understand by knowing this he preach in such a way to open that particular person's mind but arahantas cannot do this they simply preach some are benefited many are not because arahantas do not know how to do that uh, this is the difference now let me explain i told you we can divide into four groups all the existing arahantas another thing don't accept anybody as an arahant very loosely oh he is an arahant people say he is an arahant not knowing the qualities and the virtues and the knowledge and the what you call uh, the holiness when when we see very kind fine hearted a good nature and very sober very serene person uh, at once we say he is an arahant <laughs> even during the buddha's time when you see how many stories are there in dhammapada the other disciples of the buddha also had doubt whether this person attained arahanta or not then reported to the buddha so according to his indication it seems he has attained arahanta is it true ah, then the buddha say yes otherwise those monks never accept get the confirmation from some others can pretend that is why i told you arahantas they will pretend there is nothing behind the curtain i don't know whether i got enough time now come into 9:30 isn't it hmm? what do you think can okay, no? those who have achieved full final attainment without any by product their minds are absolutely purified perfected is they are task with regard to mind development they are being for them no rebirth in other words they have not it minimize their requirement for such attainment and are endowed with no additional qualities that means one group of arahant only majority of them just eradicated all mental defilements attain perfection and become holy harmless innocent good people that's all they cannot perform miracles they cannot uh, read your mind they cannot appear and disappear they cannot cure your sicknesses these are the thing that you expect yes holy pure noble person so we have to appreciate only perfection nobility and holiness arahantas they are worthy of respect worthy of honor and no secret one group majority do you know when you read that book milinda panja king milinda's questions and answers this ruler had so many doubts about the buddha stage he discussed these problems with many a scholars and monks who lived in india at that time he could not get the answer the book says at that time there were 500 arahantas none of them could give the correct answer. Uh, this is more than enough for you to understand that means they are perfect and holy and noble religious people but knowledge is not advanced first group then the second group 
who have achieved full final attainment with the threefold knowledge. Uh, here, few of them get this threefold knowledge, recollections of their previous birth. Only few of them can remember, recall their previous existence, but not others. It depends on their meditation that they have developed during their early life or previous birth. How far they have developed that particular mental faculty through meditation to remember their previous birth. Many other arahantas cannot remember. Next one, divine eyes. Divine eyes mean many things that we cannot see through our naked eyes. Those who have attained arahantahood can see. Take for instance, now we cannot see spirit or ghost. But arahantas can see if they exist here. And we cannot see devas or angels or brahma. But arahantas can see, communicate with them. And not only this, so many other things that exist, they can see through their penetrating knowledge. They use eye consciousness, this organ, to see things through their knowledge. So we haven't got this. Then, the knowledge that they gain to understand the previous birth of others. Very few can do that. Now I do not know where you come from, whether you come from China or <laughs> somewhere else. So I haven't got that knowledge. But certain Arahantas and the Buddha is of course, no question, straight away can tell you you were or you have come from heaven or hell or animal kingdom or China or Siberia, nobody knows. But they can understand that knowledge. Then, complete purity in their mind. Of course, every Arahantas maintain this. Complete purity. And there is another problem between the Buddha and Arahanta. Habits. The Buddha is the only teacher who can get rid of previous habits. But Arahantas are not free. Uh, still they use their habits. There are many examples. Certain things that they used to do during their previous birth. But they are not bad, bad things. Neutral. They are neither good nor bad. But mere mental habits but can become nuisance to others. One of the Arahantas, when he talked to others, he used very funny language. Many people had misunderstanding. Little bit of abusive language. But he's an Arahant. Then they have complaints. Why this person, supposed to be an Arahant, used this abusive language? Uh, then the Buddha says, you must understand, he is using his mental habit that he used during his so many previous births. So still he is not free from that habit. But it is not a bad thing or bad karma. Another thing. Little bit of emotional feeling Arahantas have. The Buddha is free from that. Example. Sariputta, the chief disciple, famous for wisdom. What did he say? Can, I think you can remember. He said, I heard there were so many Buddhas who existed earlier. And there will be many more in time to come. Even then, I believe that you are the best among all the Buddhas. <laughs> then the Buddha laughed at <laughs> him and asked, Sari Buddha, do you know anything about those Buddhas who appeared earlier? No, I do not know. Right? Do you know anything about the future Buddhas? I do not know. Then how can you say I am the best? Uh, that is called emotion. Arahantas are not free from this. Another incident, one day, Sariputta and group of monks visited a place. The Buddha also visited this place. 
at night time they have arranged bed for all those monks to sleep. So what happened? All the other monks occupied the available bed. When Sarputra, he the chief of the Sangha community, elderly monk, when he visited that place, no bed for him to sleep. Then he started to think, these disciples, these monks have no manners. I am the elders, I am the leaders. Even then, they never thought that they must keep a bed for me to sleep. So, he woke up. I spent the whole night under a tree. Next day morning, the Buddha, when he came out, he saw Sariputta was sitting under a tree. Then the Buddha came and said, Sariputta, what are you doing here? Where did you sleep last night? I have no bed to sleep. Those monks have occupied you know, the bed. What can I do? I came and spent the whole night here under it. Therefore, I have decided in future, I am not going to lead. I am not going to guide these. Uh, of course, he did not use the bad word. I used this word. <laughs> he used, you know, I don't want to, to, to lead this to be fellows, you know. He never used that word. <laughs> I got fed up with them. Ah, that is called emotion. Then the Buddha says, Sariputta, you should not think like this. You are the elders, you are the leaders. You have to guide them. Don't get fed up like this. Now you can see even certain emotional weaknesses among the Arahanta. Buddha is completely free from these problems. So the second group <coughs> maintain complete purity and Knowledge to understand, recall their previous birth and others' previous birth and to see things which we cannot see. Then the third group maintain, in addition to insight, psychic feet of all kind of levitation. Very few arahantas can do that. That means they can appear and disappear and reappear somewhere else. Very few of them can do, among the Arahantas. Then, mind reading. Few Arahantas can read your mind. What do you think? What do you need? Ah, then they can preach. But that knowledge differ when you compare to the Buddhas. For the Buddha can understand how far you can understand and what you have done earlier, previous life, to gain this highest. But Arahanta cannot go so far. Just they can read immediate thoughts, existing thoughts in your mind. What you are thinking, what you really need, they cannot go beyond that. Then, hearing. First group, only divine power. Here, they got divine ears. They can hear certain sound which we cannot. Even some animals, dogs, can hear many things which we can. Certain birds can see things very clearly which we cannot see. Although they are not divine eyes, sharp. So when they develop their psychic power, they use this psychic power through their senses. Uh, that is called divine eyes, divine ears. So, few arahantas can hear the sound from far distant, even from another country, sound vibration. Then, the last group possess four qualities. This is very important. Jatu Patisam Vida, four kind of knowledge. They are higher than all the others. Artha Dharma Niruddhi Patibhan. Four qualities. Artha means the real meaning of every word of the Buddha's teaching. Correct meaning, interpretation. Many other arahantas cannot. Dharma can remember, can appreciate, can understand clearly the Dhamma taught by the Buddha. Others cannot, only little bit. Nirutti, the language, 
the interpretation or the root of the word Niruddhi. Now let us take this word Dhamma. What is the root of this word Dhar? What is the meaning of Dhar? Hold. Then they can interpret, explain. And the language that they speak, they can use that language fluently. Very clear interpretation. Few Arahantas. There are some stories in Dhammapada. Lot of complaints came to the Buddha. Some disciples, after listening to other disciples, Arahantas, they say, we cannot understand what they talk. Some others say, oh, very long, you know, they get fed up, you know, very boring. Some others say, we cannot understand anything what they talk. All these complaints, that means they, they haven't got all these good qualities. And some others, when they start to preach, people walk out slowly. Not interesting. They do not know the technique, the language, the words, the interpretation. Then Patibhana, last time, they are understanding, realization. We cannot talk. We cannot explain to others anything that we cannot understand. There must be some sort of understanding in our mind to tell others. Then we can explain with confidence. Otherwise, as a theory. So if we know what we talk, then we can tell others with confidence. So the last group of Aranthas was just these four. Dharma, Niruddhi, Patibhana. The meaning of every word and uh, can understand and appreciate the real Dhamma taught by the Buddha. Can find out the root and the cause of every word, every item in the Dhamma. And develop their realizations of the Dhamma. Now these are the four. Again, divide into two groups. Those who can perform miracles and those who do not or who cannot. Two groups. That depend on their meditation. Earlier, who have developed their mind through jhana meditation or samatha meditation, attain these certain jhanic stages, they can perform certain supernatural or supernormal or miraculous power. But they are worldly supernatural power, worldly, not spiritual development. Many who have developed this have committed a lot of bad things because the mental purity is not there, complete purity. But who have attained arahantahood through this method, in the end, perfections and jhana, they can perform miracles. The Buddha did not encourage. Those who practice vipassana meditation, mean realization, do not perform any miracle and they have not developed the psychic power and they are not interested. Two group of Arantas, those who perform miracles and those who do not, are not interested. Now this is the nature of Arantas. So I try to explain in various ways. I hope one day you to attain this Aranta. <laughs> Parli. <laughs> Idango nyati nango tu sukita hontu nyato yo Imina punya kame na mame bala samagamo Satang samagamo hontu yao nipa na patiya